Hello everybody, Tim Teacher here this week, continuing our story, Obi Gerbil on the Loose. Last week, Bright Sugar Smacks was playing a dangerous game with Obi and answering more questions. But then another cat, Honey Buns, came and Sugar Smacks kept the game a secret, didn't tell Honey Buns about the game. Right? And Obi was worried at the end because the Armstrong family was going to be gone for two weeks. And Obi doesn't have food or water. Right? So, let's continue on with chapter 14. The Gray Squirrel. A day passed. Or was it two? Or three? Obi was so hungry and weak, she lost track. Each morning and evening, Tad came to feed the Armstrong's pets. But he never fed Obi. Never once did he even glance into Rachel's bedroom on his way to feed Craig's pets. Obi tried several more times to make noises to get Tad's attention, but the teenager was always listening to music on his earphones and never heard her. So finally, Obi gave up. It got to the point where she was worried that if she overexerted herself too much, she might collapse from hunger. Obi tried to keep a positive attitude. She wondered what her namesake, Obi-Wan Kenobi, would do in such a situation. If I was a fearless, clever, and resourceful Jedi Knight, thought Obi, what would I do? She heaved a forlorn sigh. Who am I kidding? I'm no Jedi Knight. I'm just a little gerbil in a pathetic little cage who's very, very hungry. Her bottom lip trembled as she said this to herself. She had never called her apartment a cage before, but now, to her, that was exactly what it was, just a cage. And then one morning, after Tad had come and gone, a very hopeful thing happened. Obi was in her bedroom, gazing out her bedroom window, and out Rachel's bedroom window, trying to preserve what little strength she had left, when she spotted the gray squirrel. He was outside on the Armstrong shingled roof, just a few yards away poking his nose about in some dry leaves in the gutter. As Obi watched the squirrel, a thought popped into her head. I may not be a fearless, clever, and resourceful Jedi Knight, she said to herself, but I know someone who is. Obi scrambled down her tube to her living room and pressed her face against the bars on the back of her cage, near where Rachel had left her bedroom window open a crack. Cupping her front paws around her mouth, Obi shouted, Hello, Mr. Squirrel! The squirrel had discovered an acorn among the brown, brittle leaves that clogged the gutter. He was nibbling on it. Hearing Obi's voice, the squirrel jerked his head up, startled. With a perplexed, quizzical expression on his face, he glanced all about, trying to figure out who had called to him. Over here, shouted Obi, waving her paw. The squirrel lifted his eyes to Rachel's bedroom window and saw Obi. Obi expected the squirrel to hurry right over, but he didn't. Could you please come here? cried Obi, smiling. I need to talk with you for a moment. To Obi's surprise, the squirrel hesitated, as if he was afraid to get near Obi. This was odd. Here was this unbelievably brave and courageous Jedi Knight of a creature who thought nothing of risking his life by dashing across a skinny telephone wire or leaping about in tree branches. And he was worried about coming close to a Obi, a mere gerbil. At last, the squirrel put aside his reservations and ventured up the sloped roof to Rachel's bedroom window. His fluffy, feathery tail twitched nervously as he peered in through the screen at Obi. Hello, my name is Obi, said Obi. I need your help. What are you in for? asked the squirrel. What am I what? asked Obi, puzzled. What are you in for? Why did they lock you up? What are you talking about? asked Obi. Her eyes fell upon the acorn that the squirrel had clutched in his paws. Obi had never eaten an acorn before. She wondered what it tasted like. Why are you in jail? asked the squirrel. Jail? cried Obi. Staring into the squirrel's face, I'm not in jail. She was horrified that the squirrel would even think such a thing. Come on, said the squirrel. You can level with me. What did you do? Murder someone? Absolutely not. What then? I didn't do anything. All right, don't tell me, said the squirrel. 
How long you in for? Look, I'm not in jail, said Obi. This is my cage. From the look of the squirrel's face, Obi could almost hear what the squirrel was thinking. Cage equals jail. Cage and jail are not the same thing, protested Obi. Sure, whatever you say, said the squirrel. They're not. So why do you want my help? asked the squirrel. And then before Obi had a chance to respond, the squirrel's eyes narrowed as he put two and two together. Oh, I get it. You want me to help you bust out, don't you? No, I don't. I just want your help getting me food. But if I do that, said the squirrel, I'll be aiding and abetting a criminal. I'm not a criminal. The squirrel gave Obi the most skeptical look. I'm not. Well, I'm not going to help you, said the squirrel. I'm not going to end up like my poor Uncle Leroy. Why? What happened to your Uncle Leroy? asked Obi. He was captured. Captured? By whom? By the man who lives in this house. Obi was stunned. Mr. Armstrong? How did he capture your Uncle Leroy? In a trap. He set it outside the cellar door. Luckily for my Uncle Leroy, it was one of those traps that captures the animal alive. What did Mr. Armstrong do with your uncle? asked Obi. Nobody knows. He took him away. Uncle Leroy has never been seen or heard from since. Look, said Obi, I'm sorry about your Uncle Leroy. Really, I am. And trust me, I don't want you to do anything that'll get you into trouble. But I really need to eat. All I ask is that you let me have a little piece of that acorn. You can stick it through this little hole. Obi pointed to a small hole in the window screen. Rachel had made the hole with a pencil when she was about five years old, long before Obi's time. The squirrel shook his head. I'm sorry, he said, but I can't help a criminal. I don't want to end up in a cage like you. A life of crime may be fine for you, Obi, but it isn't the life for me. Before Obi could say another word, the squirrel popped the acorn back into his mouth, causing his cheeks to puff out. Then he spun about and darted down the slanted, shingled roof. When he got to the edge of the roof, the squirrel took a flying leap off the gutter. He landed onto the telephone wire. As Obi watched the squirrel race across the wire, she realized that this death-defying squirrel, whom she had thought was so brave and courageous, wasn't so brave or courageous at all. No, he was just plain daffy. When the squirrel got to the wood telephone pole, he sprang onto the wire that stretched above the street. As Obi watched him whisk across the wire, she realized that the squirrel, this creature whom she had placed so much hope in, was not going to be her Jedi Knight and rescue her after all. I hope you enjoyed the reading this week. I look forward to reading with you next week. Bye-bye.